first. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. All right. So again, I'll I'll repeat. This is the regular virtual meeting for the grand list, October first, twenty twenty. Today is Wednesday, March seventeenth, two thousand and twenty one. I now call the meeting to order, and we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, in attendance tonight, Mr. Shelby Jackson, town assessor, Mr. Carl Bonamico, member of the Board of Assessment Appeal, Mr. Robert Avery, member of the Board of Assessment Appeal, Mr. Thomas Vitale, chairman of the Board of Appeal, uh, Ms. Shelley Hemingway, recording secretary, Mr. Kevin Coons, chief appraiser, and I think that's everybody. So item four for this evening, approval of minutes. Um, I have not read the, the minutes uh, in the packet, so uh, I'm not sure if other board members have. So let's read them tonight, tomorrow, uh, and we can vote tomorrow on the package that's contained in the agenda this evening. Item five is the consent agenda. I don't believe we have one yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet, Mr. Chairman. So we're going to go right to item six, discussion and possible action regarding attached appeals. We're going to start um, with hearing number 2020-066, and that is 190 Center Street. Mr. Sal Greco, and I'm going to have you raise your right hand and I will swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. So help me God. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Greco. Um, You've placed the market value on 190 Center Street at $237,900. And the basis of the appeal is C attached form. So why don't you review the attached form? Okay. Um, basically, uh, I, I wrote a letter to the, the board, which I, I'm assuming everyone has, uh, explaining uh, what has happened. Um, to uh, the property over the last uh, well, uh, 13 months or so. Uh, my mom, uh, Ann Greco, previous owner, um, has had um, some serious health issues um, over this <clears throat> past year. She's been in and out of the hospital, in and out of rehab center, and now she's a permanent resident at Elam, Elam uh, Park Baptist Home in, in Cheshire. Um, <clears throat> she basically uh, took care of all the finances and uh, bills uh, regarding this property at 190 Center Street. So um, as she as her health declined, um, I took over uh, well ownership uh, in April and um, and I took over trying to figure out you know what's you know what's what and where where things are and and who we owed. And between between myself and our bookkeeper. Um, and, you know, uh, we we basically dropped the ball on this particular uh, payment. So um, we're you know so we received we received the uh, the notice with the uh, I believe the penalty and interest. And um, in my accountant um, Lance Syax, uh recommended that we um, we come in front of you and see if we can get a uh, a reduction or elimination of the uh, uh, penalties. So what you're discussing here is strictly the penalties. Are you talking about the actual assessed value? Um, oh, we are not. You are not. So because I see 
I don't know. Um, I, see a lot of paper... I see a lot of paperwork here with drawings and numbers and sketches and uh, dimensions. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the appraiser was out um, and, and, you know, and in, in, in looked at the exterior of the building. Um, but um, at, we, we are not we're not um, we are not contesting or I am not contesting the the value, the appraised value. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm asking for a little leniency on the um, on the um, the, the uh, uh, fines or late fees. Correct. And you um, should be aware from the, the town assessor's office that. The board has no power based upon state statute for uh, changing the, the penalty. Uh, you know, we are bound uh, by, by that statute. Um, you know, we really can't eliminate it or change it. Um, okay. Do you, know, do you know exactly what, so the penalty is based on 10% of the value of the of the assessed value of the property, correct? Right. So $23,790 is the penalty amount. So that penalty amount times 23,790 times the mill rate of, and again, Mr. Jackson, 29.19 is the mill rate that will be in effect for this um, tax cycle. Well, well, actually, that's last year's mill rate, Mr. Chairman. We hope that it's going to go down slightly, but last year's okay. mill rate is a good barometer to use okay. uh, to go by, and I, I calculate that at just under seven hundred dollars. You know, just uh, it's under seven hundred dollars as far as and actual dollars for the penalty itself. Correct. Next okay. year, if paperwork is filed and on time, what have you, uh, that 10% penalty will be gone. So, but uh, I, so as that, the board, you know, we're, we are not um, given that power to remove state oh, mandated. Okay, I was given, penalties. all right. I was given bad advice then. Okay, I thought if we if we explained our hardship that we could get a um, uh, a leniency, but uh, if it's in if it's in, if it's in the books, it's in the books. Yeah, I. Okay. I'm, you know, it's just not something we have the power to do. If you you know, and you agree that right. the assessment is okay. Um, yes. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So unfortunately. Um, um, all right, so so we will so we will pay. We, all right, so we will pay this then. Okay. Do I hear a motion, <laughs> Mr. Chairman? I make a motion of no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other questions, paperwork? Please get a hold of the assessor's office. They'd be more than happy. You know, to work well, with it. Uh, well, thank you all for your time. I appreciate it, and, and have a good rest of the evening. Thank you. Good evening. So I'm looking for hearing number 2020-041, Lyman Wallace. Is that person uh, on the line? I am. Can you hear me? You are logged in as Rich A? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm Jennifer Wallace, Wallace Lyman's daughter. Okay. And I sent the paperwork in to speak on his behalf. Okay. Let me get to your field here. Okay, so I have I just, just, I have Jennifer Augusta. Yes. Is that you? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to swear you in.
I don't know who that is. I, I don't know either. Whoever. Jennifer Wallace, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna right. So Jennifer, I'm gonna swear you in. I hereby okay. solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Or that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so this is concerning 106. South Colony Road, Wallingford. Correct. All right. And again, what market value does the applicant place on the property? You have left that blank. All right. So you're not contesting the assessed value of the property at all. Is that is that true or you're you're here to talk about the penalty? I think I get, I, you keep muting me. I think there's two people on. Yeah, who's? Who, who I'm met, Rich. Mr. I, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, there are two people on. So someone called Rich A keeps coming on. That's where we heard the, I think that's where we heard the, it sounded like a car door opening no, or something. No, I'm Rich. I'm under my husband's account, which is Rich A. I don't know the other J.A. that's on here. That's Jennifer Gussa. I don't know if. I don't know how it would have two different accounts. I, I'm not the J.A. I'm yeah, on the R. Uh, okay, Mr. Jackson, mute that. There you okay. go. You got it. Yes, you got it. So now we're dealing with, that's Rich A, and, and the other one is muted. Okay. Okay. So Thank so you. who is Rich A? <laughs> that's my husband. Her husband. I mean, who is speaking for, uh, under that uh, account? Because I need to Jennifer, make it. Jennifer Augusta. Okay, let me see if I can make that part of the record. Uh, because it's this is all recorded and we try to um, uh, make it we want to make sure, sure it's 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 properly uh, made part of the record so rich a uh, it's not allowing me to change the name yeah because I think it's however the account on go meeting got set up yeah yeah so and it didn't ask me for a name when I installed it. I think it just took like, the, that's usually the name I have under Zoom when we do Zoom meetings. So I don't know if it just grabbed that so, identity. So, 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 you know, for the recording secretary's notes, the speaker who is identified as Rich A is actually Jennifer Augusta, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. So I need to change the other account. Um, if if you'll indulge me, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask the other account who they are, so we know. Okay. Uh, You're talking about the account with the name Jennifer Augusta. Right, and I and I made that change. So. So you don't think that account is, is Jennifer Augusta? It just says that. Right, but it was a phone number, and I thought it was okay. her speaking. Okay. okay. So who is uh, who is the other party on the line? Please identify yourself. Um, it's uh, three six nine twenty five East Center Street. Okay. Okay, and your name? Peter Hogan. Actually, it's uh, um on the file. It's Lawrence Hogan, my husband. And he's in the way home, so I joined the meeting first. Lawrence Hogan. Okay, thank you. I'm going to put you back on hold in a minute here. Thank but don't you. Worry, don't worry, we will get to you. And Very good. Uh, just be patient. Okay. And now I think we have that figured out, Mr. Chairman. Um, Let's see here. You might want to. I was able to key that. The other one. All right. So uh, we're now speaking to Rich A. <laughs> Alias Jennifer Augusta. 
Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Jennifer. Um, back to your appeal um, for 106 South Colony Road. You have not put a market value on the property. This appeal is is about the income and expense report. Uh, yes, which I just learned from the previous. Uh, is it that you can't do anything about it? I cannot remove it as the board. It is a state mandated statute that uh, um, if it wasn't filed, um, I, I can't, I cannot change uh, that at all, or the or the board cannot change. But you're not, you're not, um, you're not here to talk about the market value or the assessed value. It's it's about the penalty. So let's let's see what the penalty. Um, so the penalty is uh, twenty one thousand two hundred and twenty dollars of uh, assessed value. Um, twenty one oh. About six hundred and eighteen dollars, Mr. Chairman. Correct. So that uh, would be the additional tax amount in this year's tax uh, bill, approximately. And uh, again, uh, next year when you file and everything, the ten percent will will be gone. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm with the previous the previous person that was given a told that it could be appealed. So I, I understand that now okay. after the first call, it can't be, but is this, a, because I'm just taking over my, you know, my father's finances, um, is this a form that gets filled out yearly or is it a? So let me, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, oh, absolutely, Mr. Jackson, yes, this is. So, so the state law requires the assessor's office to uh, collect this information for two years prior to a scheduled revaluation. Now, many towns do it every year, but here in Wallingford, we only do it for the two years prior to the revaluation. And what we do is we send a letter out advising you that you have to file, we send you the form, and then we usually follow up with uh, one reminder uh, letter and uh and and you know and and then just a reminder and sometimes you know people will file it you know at some point and and we accept it when they file it we accept it we're not this is something that we don't we do not enjoy in the assessor's office as i'm sure you do not enjoy it so we are required to do it because it's an important information you know to process as part of the reval and uh, so it's only two years in Wallingford. It's only the two years prior to the reval, and uh, it's not and every. How often, is the, how often is the reval done? It's a five-year cycle, so okay. Okay. so you know for, for five you know we'll our next revaluation will be in 2025, and so what we will do is we will request this information in 2023 and 2024. Um, help me with that, Kevin. Is it 24 and five or 23 and four? Um, it would be 24 and 25, but we'd be right. asking income yes. for 23 and 24. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but but the point is we send out a message, we send out a letter, we, we send out the form, we request it, and, um, uh, and 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 you get notification of that, right? And I apologize I, for not receiving the notification. There's just been a lot of paperwork with trying to help manage my dad's finances in the past few years. Um, There's no need to apologize. I guess, apologize. I guess, no I guess part of what I, what I'm hoping to find out is. Is a new will a new one of these be mailed to me, or do I need to fill out so that next next year it's fine? They're typically mailed in April, around the middle of February. So I should get another one this April. Uh, you won't get another one until probably 
2023. Right. So that so that I can make sure next tax year it's correct. When does this need to get submitted? Correct. The paperwork in next. The penalty is not assessed next year. That's correct. Or on the next tax cycle. Yeah. It won't be applied. So the 10% won't be applied on the next tax cycle. Correct. Yeah. For the grand list of 2021, this penalty will not apply. So it just it, so it only applies for one year, and then it gets waived until the next reevaluation's done. Yes, correct. Okay. So so that I understand, there's nothing I can do about this now. I get that, and there's nothing that I need to do about it until 2023 when you send out new records our new paperwork. We'll send out the, the records um, or the, the paperwork for you to fill out in uh, April, middle in the middle of April. Of which year? I'm going to say 2024. Okay, so this 10%, the, the $618 I have to pay this year, I will not have to pay subsequent years to this. Correct. As long as you file that um, the next one that you receive in the mail. Right, but there's like three years between now and then. That's correct. Yeah, like Shelby said, some towns send them out every year, so people will get in the habit of filing it. But Wallingford, we don't require it every single year, just two years prior to a revaluation year. Right. So I just want to make sure that over the next two years, I'm not going to be paying the $618, no, correct? No, just for the 2020 grand list, just on the tax. So it's, a, bill. it's a one time fee? Correct. Okay, so next year it'll be down to 618. And does do I get a bill for the 618, or do I need to mail that in separately from the taxes that get? It's included on in the tax bill. Okay. It, it'll be included on the assessment. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe there was a penalty last year as well for the 2019 grand list. Does that sound? On this on hit this property. Yes. So unfortunately, um, the two grand list years we had to penalize this property. Okay. Um, like I said, I I wouldn't be surprised, and it's just been a, a lot of work. Um, and um, and there were unfortunately so, quite a few other folks that are in the same boat as you are. There's, there's almost ninety accounts, I believe that. For one reason or another, did not. Right, and and I'm not trying to make excuses for it. I'm just I want to make sure that going forward, because I have a feeling that this is going to be my responsibility from this day forth, and I just want to make sure that I have all things correctly in line. Certainly, if you have questions on how to fill it out, certainly give us a call right away, and we can help you through it. I appreciate that. So there's nothing that I need to do until the next 2024 paperwork comes in. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Do, do I hear a motion? Did we? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. No change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lawrence Hogan. I don't know if we have her muted or she has herself muted. I did not mute it. I'm on the phone, so. Okay, so. Let me just quickly say this. I reviewed your appeal. Uh, I see Lawrence Hogan as the only person who has signed the appeal. So if he's not there, uh, uh, we'll have to wait till be, he's there. Yeah, he will be. He will be here in two minutes. Okay, for the next one. Okay, so uh, we'll. We don't have anybody else. Okay. Uh, Susie. Oh, 
Just give me two minutes. It's, uh, I'm all going right, to. All right. Okay. We will, we will wait unless somebody else comes in between, but, but uh, we'll wait. Okay. Thank you very much. Right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Okay. okay, one minute now. Hey, hey, Shelby. I'm trying to yeah, set up the uh okay, okay. already I just gotta get him on the phone line. All right, while while we're waiting, if it would please the, the boards, I wanna just review the last couple of cases with the uh, recording secretary. Shelly, can you unmute? Yes. So Shelly, for Salvatore Greco, what, what was the uh what was the vote? What's the case number? Zero six six. Six six. Motion for no change. Okay. Thank you. No change. Um, and then, so for the next one was, um, I guess the next one was the alignment of O forty one, right? Correct. No change. All right. So I'm up to date. I just want to, I missed that when I wanted to write it down and make sure we have it. I have my doc, when I hand my doc, I got to tell you, Mr. Chairman, when I hand these documents in to our recording secretary, she is fastidious right, in her on. detail of, of reviewing things. And I got to, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yep. She is. She is very detailed. Have you, uh, did you mute the cat? Well, nice five eight percent has she. What's that call? Did you mute the cat? <laughs> Is she muted? I, I'm not able to mute yeah, that cat. Yeah, I'm speaking with your own cat. That's her own mind. <laughs> so, I, I tried to keep her out. I, I've kept her out for the last few meetings, but this time she snuck in. And uh, Kevin and I were talking, so... I, it's too late now. Sorry. Nice head. Tell me, I'm trying to show the uh, desktop. The new access file. Anyway, we bought the 305. Yeah. What would and you like me to do, Kevin? You want me to show the desktop? Or I was trying to show my desktop just so he could see no. if I could see yeah. so so it. Yeah. Commercial. Being somewhere. Sorry. That was the first uh, assess 232 and then jump to 230, no, 232 to 235, now it's a 248. Kevin? Okay, thank you. So, I mean, you can tell me what you want and we can share it, but. Oh, so you have it on your desktop, Shelby? I did it. I got this from the t the town's website. It's all listed on the town's website, so gotcha. okay. you, you can go actually, there and get it as well. It's actually smaller uh, than we can see it on our own. Just FYI. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. I was just gonna play Lawrence around. Hogan ready? Is that you? Yes, I'm ready. Is Lawrence Hogan there? Yes, yes I, am. I am. Okay, all right. Okay, so we're going to now have hearing number 2020-019. Lawrence Hogan. Uh, 925 East Center Street. I'm going to swear you in. I yep. hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Okay. Yes. Okay, you put a market value on the property at 305000 on May 19th, 2019. This is the price yes. I paid at closing. Yes. 
in the town based on the reval of last year, October 10th, uh, has placed the appraised market value of $345,600. Um, so go ahead. This is a commercial. Yeah. yeah, you have it down as being commercial. Okay. It's, it's not it's commercial. commercial. It's not Mr. Assessor, could you address that issue? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this over to Kevin Coons, who's been okay. working on on, the, on this account. Um, we we show the sale price at 320, so maybe we could ask about that. And right. uh, there have been some renovations that were done, you know, uh, since since the purchase date, and uh, you know, and that's and that's why we're coming up with a little bit of a higher figure. But I'm gonna ask Mr. Kevin Coons to fill fill in the blanks because he spent a lot of time on this one. Kevin, if you would. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, they did meet with the in, uh, vision appraisal. They had an informal meeting um, and they received a reduction. Uh, they reduced the market value by 9,800 or $6,000 assessed. But what they unfortunately failed to do was to change on the informal hearing form that I pulled out, it did say that uh, per the owner, it's a single family house. Um, but the revaluation company did not reflect that. They just, um, for what, I'm not sure exactly what kind of change they made, but they did reduce the assessment already. Um, what I've done, um, maybe let me jump back here a little bit. The appellant's estimate of market value is 305, but what was recorded on the land record, so it's 320,000. So maybe I don't, um, so I'm not sure where the 305,000 comes from. Um, but however, what I've done, I today I recalculated it. I made some changes to the property to reflect it as a single family residential property. And by doing that, the value actually increased to 304,000. <laughs> That's it, it went up to what? How much? Three hundred and fifty-four thousand six hundred. Um. So, so it, in essence, is not a commercial property. That's no, it's not. Without doing an inspection, or I don't believe anyone was out there. But according to the testimony of the owner, it's now a single-family home and not a mixed-use property. So. And as a result, that's increased the market street. value. That's correct. Because bef before it was purchased, it was it was description described as residential. No, before it was purchased, at least according to our records, it was listed as a mixed use property, where there was a, a hair salon, I guess I believe, on okay. the first in the front, okay. and then residential behind. Okay, so let's you know. Um, as as per the the town records, uh, it was sold. It was purchased at three twenty, not three oh five. Correct. Yeah, we have a thousand and, dollar. Con and yeah, uh, there was fifteen thousand um, dollar seller concession. give back concession concession on that. Huh. I might pay, I paid three oh five for the house. The contract price is three twenty, but it gives back. Fifteen thousand. Right. The, the contract price on the house is three twenty. What they had a consensus to give me back fifteen thousand dollars on that house. We don't have any documentation to that effect, Mr. Chairman. So that's you know that's that's a factor that should be considered. If we had the documentation to look at, we would. This is Shelly. Yeah, this is correct. This I, is have, I have that. 
the con- on the contract. It's on the contract when I bought the house, so I have it. I mean, even they pay the three twenty, it's fine, you know. But it's yeah. So we fix it. Just tell them. I don't believe that was submitted for the informal hearing either. Just tell them we take it. What did he uh, in the informal hearing? Um, More or less, oh, it just it just had notes that it was a single family house. Nothing else was submitted. I mean, I don't have a problem going with the 320. If that's what you valued it at the first time, I'll go with that. But, I mean, that's that's what's on record. That's what's yeah. been recorded. Yeah. That's what's on the MLS that closed out at 320. Um, so, yeah. um, so that's we're we're now at. Um, uh, what was it? 2019. What they? Yes. Yeah. 2019. This. This. We're talking about the value of the property on August 1st, 2020. Mm-hmm. So that in itself. I mean, August 1st, 2020. The prices of residential homes um, certainly have gone up uh, quite a bit uh, by August 1st of 2020. Plus, you've done some improvements. Correct. You put in. Handicapped shower, new roof, above ground pool. Um, is that no, maybe not the above ground pool. The new roof and the and the um, no, yeah, you know, you put the pool into it in August. I did. You, you, yes. made, some, you made some improvements. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think we're we're. We're one of forty thousand. You know. <laughs> It went up forty thousand. That's a lot. Right now it's at three. Right now it's at three forty-five. It went up fifteen thousand dollars from three twenty. I mean twenty-five thousand. No, it's, we we bought a three oh five. Well, I bought it at three oh five. I mean, what I paid for it. Well, do you happen to have a, a an appraisal, Mr. Hogan? I no. Uh, no, I have my bill of sale. Yeah, we have appraisal when we buy it. Yeah, I have an appraisal when I bought it. See, that's the kind of documents that we really, you know, the the bill the bill of sale or the or the closing statement is, um, if you were given fifteen thousand dollars back at at the uh, yeah closing, but we don't we yeah, don't I, know that you're asking us to make decisions based okay. on no factual information. I can bring that into you with you. Yeah, I can bring it into you. Now, do you have it tonight that you can show us? Maybe on the screen, just just. Tell them we're not home. I'm not home. I'm still. I'm working. So. Uh. Well, this is this is the kind of information that that needs to be filed with the appeal so we know what we're dealing with because we have information that's not the same as what you're you're uh, stating so that's the meeting yeah i'll do it the next meeting with you just give me another date and i will yeah you didn't i'll know. have it i didn't know i did that yeah. what time will you be home tonight um probably in about an hour and a half that puts it at the why, why don't Buddy. you, uh, you know, see if you can uh, get us that document tonight and call back in, and we'll just table this to hear from you. Okay. That sounds fine. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion uh, to wait to receive documents, and we can table this hearing uh, until we have a chance to take a look at it and assess it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay, please. Uh, yeah, we'll head home in a while. You can, you can, if you have it on okay. your desktop, you can you can share your desktop with us, uh, or yeah. you can just hold it up and we can see it. I mean, if you have a closing statement that shows that kind of number, um, you okay. know, we'll we'll take that into consideration. But but in essence, that's all I asked you, know, you to do. <laughs> yeah, in essence, the uh, value of the house is is not out of the market uh, value at this point. But but. We'll give okay. you that ability. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.
Nobody else? We got a gap till seven o'clock. Is that? Uh, That's what it looks like, Mr. Chairman. If you would like me to start calling, I will, and then we'll let Kevin take the helm for a while. How many do, how many do we have at seven to eight? We have one, and then Mazzucato, is that two, uh, basically the two different, no, it's the same thing, right? What I would do is I'd start calling the later people, and because you hope, you know, the, the thought is that People who are close to the time will start calling in. So maybe, I would maybe you want to call the residential people uh, at the end. You know. Okay. All right. You know, pick pick one off of there that uh, the first one that you can get to call uh, or answer. Mm -hmm. You know, that we we have 20 minutes till seven o'clock, so maybe we can find somebody from the last three and plug them in now. Residential. You know, we can go through that. Uh, without maybe too much uh, discussion. So so you'd like me to call the residential? Yeah. Appeal. Okay. One of those last three, you know. We'll do. The other ones are all commercial, right? They get to be more time consuming. Okay, I'll do it right now, Mr. Chairman, and I'll leave right. uh, Kevin control. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I just while we have a little bit of time here, there's um, a Burger King has an appeal yes. at 888 North Colony Road. Um, I don't believe that Ryan submitted a, a letter of authorization to the representative to represent the owner. And what happened was they the owner of the property called us and didn't understand why they got an appeal letter. They don't recall, you know, allowing or authorizing anyone to appeal their assessment. I I, I did see that. Did you? Okay. So, all right. So we still don't have anything. So if he if he calls in, he's he's not been authorized by the owner to to be doing this. Is that correct? No, correct. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we can hear it. No. Yeah. Okay. I uh I I I saw that. I wasn't fully uh knowledgeable of exactly uh uh so as far as we know the actual owner has no problem with the assessment there. Correct. And what we were thinking was if the possibly the tenant may be responsible for the taxes, so maybe Ryan might be representing the tenant. That's that's only speculation, mate. Okay.
So Kevin, I I, I see um, this Ryan LLC is also representing uh, Live Nation. Is Ryan LLC a nationwide organization that? Yes. Yeah. They. Um, I know they file a lot of personal property declarations on behalf of other owners. And I believe the other Ryan cases, um, they did have a, a proper letter of authorization, according to Ian. Okay. So it was just this one. Well, not only that, on top of it, somebody actually called and said they have not em employed them to represent them. Let, 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 let me weigh in on that one, Mr. Chairman, if I may. This is Shelby. Yes. So uh, in working with uh, the tax representatives, we've reached an, a, a, a consensus on a valuation for the Oakdale Theater, which includes two properties. There's the main building with the uh, theater itself and some ancillary buildings. And then there's a secondary parcel of land, which is their parking lot. Um, and uh, it, I got to tell you, just very briefly, it's a very special purpose property. It's specifically for these, you know, concerts and events and theater events. The, that segment of the economy has really been hit very hard. And um, even though I reduced their value by a significant amount, they still felt, uh, you know, I hadn't gone far enough, but we did reach a consensus. So we're going to ask the board to consider approving a $9 million market value on the theater itself. And then the parking lot, I think, is around $759,000. There'll be a no change on that. Um, so okay. we work, we've worked with their people and uh, come to that conclusion. This is also, by the way, you know, much of the work that I do is done in in concert with the law department because, you know, we want to uh, try to, you know, not that we want to avoid litigation, but in other words, we want to avoid unnecessary litigation. Right. And, and yeah, so, you know, and, and this is a very unique property. Um, so I'm going to ask the board to, to, to rule on that. I think there's a memo to that effect or a, an email or something. Okay. Yeah. What? Um, that's good. That's good to know going into that appeal. Uh, we were discussing 888 North Colony Road, um, Burger King. Right. That, um, somebody applied uh, an appeal, but but the owner has um, not engaged him in in asking. Right. So 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 Ryan. So, Ryan uh, Associates, that they're a, a nationwide tax appeal company, okay. and they have agents and, and, and representatives and offices throughout the U.S., through, all throughout various markets of the United States. So some of them, you know, we work together with, and then this one here on the Burger King, apparently, uh, you know, and Kevin can fill you in, we were not able to verify that uh, that the property owner actually yeah. uh, authorized you know <laughs> their, their appeal so so that we're going to ask we're going to ask the board for no change on that uh, but the live nation is a different situation altogether correct okay okay just thank you shelby thank did you. you say did you say reduce the theater to nine million dollars that's market value um let me see if I can get to that one here. It's here tonight. So there are two parcels that comprise the Oakdale Theater. There's the main parcel with the actual buildings, the theater itself, and I think there are some ancillary buildings. And then there's a secondary parcel, which is just basically a, 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 an extra parcel of land which they use for parking lot. I think it's the lower end of the parking lot, which you would find... Um, at the um, uh, north end of the property, but behind the gas station that's across the street from 
Serafinos, if that helps. Here we go, Live Nation. So they have one property which is a parking lot. And that is, bear with me, sir. So that is appeal number 2020-101. That is the parking lot. So it's an additional parking lot. We have a market value of 759200 We are recommending no change, and the other side agrees to no change. Then there is uh, uh, appeal number 2020-102, which is the, um, the theater itself. Uh, there are four buildings on that parcel. There's the new theater. I think there's the old theater and there's what they call the barn and different various structures on that property. And we were at, I think I'm going to say 9.8 million. So we were originally at based on the 2020 revaluation, our, our assessment, our, 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 no, our market value was 9,804,800. And we have agreed to reduce that valuation to $9 million. And the other side has agreed that if the board does approve that, uh, that there would be no further appeal on the property going forward. And you know, this is a this is a tough one because it's a very special purpose property, uh, and I think we all know how hard some of these theaters and uh, concert halls have suffered under the COVID. And and although COVID is a one year, it's a one or two or maybe a three year. Who knows? We, we don't know, but it's it's a temporary uh, adjustment for them. However, we felt that that was a that was a, uh, a settlement that was reasonable and fair, and uh, and they agreed. So I think the you know the, the the tax representative will come on, and he'll he'll make his testimony to that effect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was a tough one. There's a couple of tough ones in here, and that that was a tough one. I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, that's a that's a real tough one. I mean, they've 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 really gone without any concerts to speak of, and it's it's, you know, <laughs> myself, I go there every year to watch the uh, the Pink Floyd shows. Now I'm showing now I'm showing some of my uh, some of my true colors, right? So. <laughs> Okay, so we have a caller, uh, caller number three. We do. Yes, my name is Jim Moore. How are you? Okay, great. We're going to uh, bring you in early here. And so let me get your appeal so we can. Sure. Okay, so this is appeal. Everybody, everybody here with us, Robert, Shelly, Carl, and uh, okay. So this is appeal number 2020-040, Joseph and Armella Barone. Okay, I'm going to nope, swear you in. Is, Pardon? Mine is dash 038. My name is James Lawrence. This is in regards to 95 Dudley Ave. Okay, we're, we're going to take you next, okay? Okay, I thought you, you said I was the only one who joined early. I apologize. Sorry. Wait a minute. <clears throat> no. Correct. Uh, so, please hold on. We're gonna we're gonna do uh, uh, Joe Barone. Um, okay. So, hearing number twenty twenty dash o four o, Joseph and Carmela Barone. I'm gonna swear you in. 
I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes, I do. Okay. And this is 1183 Durham Road. Market value unknown. Purchased November 2015 for $281,500. Land is 0.93 acres, appraised at 149.8. Surrounding properties at equal or greater size, all appraised at lower values. Please see attached list. So the town currently has a market value of $294,600 on the property, total uh, building and land. Um, Let me just. Current market value. Uh, so I was wrong. Wait a minute. Okay, that, that number was the prior year. So under the reval, it has gone to $309,300. And the town has reviewed the property. Um, during the informal appeal process, this property was reduced from a market value of 322,000 to 309,300. Correct. Okay. The, the subjects are smaller than its immediate neighbors, but has a land higher value. Um, reduce land value by 5% for highway proximity to bring it in line with neighbors, resulting in a market value of 301,800. Hello. So, we, that, that, Oh, yeah, that was my concern is when I look at the surrounding properties, I didn't understand why my land was valued higher than people that have more property than I do. I, I didn't understand what the, you know, what the criteria was that that was based on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, but but now this, they, Cameron, let me interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, but this, no this here property here, we... There was a, we made a clerical error in our office on uh, recalculating the assessment. I'm going to turn it over to uh, our chief appraiser, Kevin Coons, who can bring you up to snuff as far as bringing up to date as far as what we did. But we are recommending a, a, an adjustment for, um, uh, for the land itself. Okay. okay, go ahead, Kevin. Thank you. Kevin, you're muted. Hi, Shelby. I don't have that memo in front of me. Um, I think you spoke with Ian later this afternoon. I was trying to um, allow people into the the chat room, and whatnot. So I was not. I, I have I have the um, I have the memo from Ian. Um, okay. So the it would the market value is reduced from 322 to 3093 and and then it was reduced again by wait a minute by five percent for the highway. Current, well, currently, they have a market value of 301800 on it. Well, but no, yeah, the, uh, I'm sorry for the confusion. So let me get back to this. That's um, what. Uh, no, you know that, that's that's not correct. Uh, 
It was it was reduced at the informal hearing process. Okay. Down to 309. Correct. And I'm sorry, what is what is the case that we're looking at? Because I can't find the um it's the last, last one of the pack. Zero. Okay. Zero that's four zero. Thank you. Bear with me, Mr. Chairman. No problem. No problem. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. So the gentleman submitted, I think the gentleman submitted a, a, a list or a spreadsheet of land values. And I would encourage the board to look at that in making a determination. That's what was submitted by the applicant. Our, our our value on the land, our recommended value, is um, reduction from where it is at one forty nine eight hundred down to one forty three. 500. Okay. That's a market value reduction on the land only. We're okay. not looking at any other factors. I'm sorry. <clears throat> what was that number? 143? 143,500. 500, thank you. And that, and that brings you right in line with your other those other comparables that you that you brought to our attention mm -hmm. um, you know I think there were a couple that were a little bit lower there was some that were higher um, and and what we did I think we made a five percent adjustment on the land or thereabouts and arrived at that figure 143 500. So then the total value for the property is going to be what? Well, I'll have to calculate that for you. Uh, so if you give me a minute, I'll try to do that. Sure. Thank you. As I recall, your concern was with the land. Is that correct, sir? Well, that's what I didn't understand was how um, some of my neighbors have more property and they're actually appraised less. Well, some some of those folks over there have wetlands. They have other, you know, there are factors that may adjust, you know, the excess acreage of their property. You know, um, you're in an R40 zone, so anything above and beyond one acre you know, we try to adjust that for, you know, if there are wetlands, if there's a lot of rock or ledge, or if there's a, you know, a topography issue. In other words, if the topography. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of my concerns with my yard is I do have quite a steep hill here on the side. There's a, there's a section of property that really I can't do much with because it's on a pretty good grade. Right. So we're trying to we're trying to take what you gave us and adjust for that. So, um, yeah, I, I guess our recommended uh, market value, Mr. Chairman, would be 303,300. And um, that's adjusting the land value based upon the applicant's submittal. Do I hear um, do I hear a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce um, based on the land value reduction, an overall market value reduction to three hundred and one thousand eight hundred dollars. 
The 303, sir. 303. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's that's my recommendation. I mean, the board will do what the board will do, but my recommendation was 303-300. Uh, Mr. Bonamico, please make a recommendation. I'll uh, make a recommendation, uh, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the market value to $303,300. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mr. Barone, you'll be uh, that'll be reflected in your tax bill. Okay, I guess that's it then. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good night. Good night. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I didn't see who came next, but on, on our agenda list, uh, James Lawrence would be next. Okay. And that uh, is hearing number 2020-038. Yes. We have several now. And, and waiting, so let me see. Mr. Lawrence, are you there? Yes, I am on. Okay. The chair, the chairman will hear your case. Go ahead. Let me find, let me find your uh, your case first, so I can. Uh... Sure. Okay. Thank you. What, are, what is your property address, sir? It's 95 Dudley Avenue. It's commercial right. property. Okay. Okay. I, I do. I did find it now. Um, so I'm going to swear you in. I sure. I hereby solemnly <laughs> swear that the testimony about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. And this is concerning 95 mm -hmm. Dudley, Dudley Avenue. Avenue. And mm -hmm. it's concerning your income and expense penalty uh for um not having it, it uh on file with us so please go ahead uh yes i was in the town hall several times um because um around the time that the letter was out i was actually in the office transferring from the um it was in the estate or it was in um, the, the trust. Um, so during that period of time, I, my mom had passed and I was working through the probate and moving things from the trust into the um, individuals, my brothers, myself and my niece. Um, and, you know, I, I was rearranging stuff. I was working with the town. Um, to get everything in alignment, and um, there was no change, other changes that was requested of me at the time. I didn't know something was outstanding because the expense and income had not changed from um, 19 to 20. Um, so when we were there, we talked about it, and, there, and my understanding by talking with her was there was no changes, and I didn't have to create another form um since then they've told me i still need to send it in even if there's no change um but at the time i i you know i was taking it over from my mother who had just passed i i didn't know all the ins and outs and in the regulations in that um but i mean the increase for that was i thought pretty severe it's going to increase my uh amount due on the property by twelve hundred dollars which i thought was a little um, and i want to say excessive but i just didn't um i didn't feel it was appropriate honestly i mean my family has owned that property for over 25 years um you know um and we're we're always paying our taxes on time we're not neglectful with the town um you know i just didn't see that big of a hit actually <clears throat> hence why we're talking okay um and and as in some of the documentation um that was sent to you um 
the Board of Assessment Appeals, we cannot remove that 10% assessment. Uh, that is a state uh, legislated, mandated uh, statute. So there's really nothing that uh, uh, the board can uh, uh, approve to change that. So yeah, you, and you're right. It's it's approximately twelve hundred and sixty six dollar additional tax for the one year. After that, it, is, it, uh, it is only for one year though. That is not going forward. No, it's a penalty for the year that oh. that missed. And, and okay, um, Mr. Co Mr. Cohen's going to help you it's, explain it's, what the next one's going to be. Um, it's only a one-year uh, uh, penalty you know, for the 2020 grant. Okay, so um, uh, no, no, I, I was just going to ask then, do I still need to go back into my 2020 record or 2019, no, no 2020 records and um, put that on file with the town still, even though I'm already getting penalized because I just want to make sure I do the right thing here. Um, and my second question would be, when is my next one due so I can make sure that this is taken care of because I do not live in the state. Well, I have a house in Connecticut, but I do not reside full time here. So I want to make sure that this going forward takes, you know, is taken care of in the appropriate time frame so that I can make sure it's done. Okay. Um, we have other cases. Um, some towns, they send out income and expense statements every year, but Wallingford is not one of those. So we typically only send out two years prior to a revaluation year. So the next scheduled one that to be sent out would be in April of 2024. And that would ask you about income for the, for the fiscal year of 2023. So that's, you can watch then. Okay. Yeah. All right. No. So it's not every year then. I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's it's not something I have to do every year then. That's correct. Okay. Okay. In regards to the prior one that I missed on, do you still need me to fill one out and put it on record? Yeah, that wouldn't be required at this point. And you did fill one out. I, I, you know, you did fill one out for the 2018 grand list. Um, there were some omissions in that, but you did file that on time, so that's that's helpful. Unfortunately, the 2019 was not filed. But there's so no. 2018 was back to back to 2019, but then um, there's not another one for a few more years. That's correct. I, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I, I guess. Okay, well, yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, I did get the reevaluation as of October 2020, so um, I have that document. So I'll, I'll just keep it in mind that 2024 will be the next time I will need to show the, uh, the form out. Yeah, and make sure if you do happen to change your mailing address, certainly try to let us know also. Um, yeah, it's it's on it's on file with the town. I um I I did um give give them all well mine as well as my brothers or partners in the business. So there are several, but I'm the primary um address that you would be sending information to. It, it is on record, but thank you though. Great. Appreciate the info. I guess then so I'm all motion? set. Do I hear a motion from the board? Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so um, next would be Mr. Mazzucato. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Caller seven, are you Mr. Mazzucato? This is uh, Mr. Mora, I am his appraiser. Uh, he's having trouble accessing you. He's having trouble accessing us. Uh, yeah. But you're not you're not authorized to speak for him. So 
Yeah, you need a you need a written authorization, so I can't. Correct. I was only so there to ask, we, answer uh, questions. Why don't we go on to the next person? And uh, does he need help getting on? Um, I, I, you know, I'll try and contact him and okay. um, see if I can't guide him on. Okay. Does he need? Is he coming on via phone? Does he? You know. Yes. Yes. Would be All via right, phone. So, um, so the phone I, I, number, I, I, do, you, do you have that? I, I, have, agenda? I have all that in front of me, yes. I can offer your, your uh, email that you sent out. Okay, I can, so I can get a hold of them and have them uh, tie into you. Uh, okay, well, then uh, we'll wait for, uh, we're going to move on, and, and uh, when you are available, just let us know, and we'll, we'll come back to you. All right. Th thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Okay, um, so is there somebody here, hearing number 2020-034, Thornson, LLC? Glenn, is that you? Uh, that's John. Uh, yes, I'm on the line. Okay, John, all right. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm off the line here. Am I? Okay, so let me just find your I'm appeal. <laughs> Okay, all right, I did find it. 2020-034, LLC, John Perillo. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes. Okay, so... Um, You're not contesting the market value of your property. There's no value here. You're contesting we did not receive the income and expense notice. We moved in yep. 2020 and uh, you, hello. Am I? Am I? Am I? Can you hear me? Who hello. Are that's not. That's not John. Right, this, is Re, this, is, this is Reno Mazzucato. Am I? Am I? Am, yep, can you hear me? No. We can hear you, but but. Uh, Please hang on, because we're we're gonna move on. We've moved on to someone else, so just just hang on, and then we'll come back to you next. Okay, John. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, okay, so you have a penalty of ten percent uh, because you did not file. Is that correct? Uh, our office moved, and we we never received a notice, and the, it wasn't forwarded to us. So let me read through some of this. Okay. Um, So current market value is $310,500. The current net assessment is $217,400. For not filing the 2019 income and expense statement, there's a 10% assessment penalty, uh, which has added $21,740 uh, to your assessment. So your total assessment for the 2020 grand list it's $239,140. $21,740 in additional assessment uh, value. Uh, 
Well, I, hold on. So that 10%, one time 10% penalty amount of 2147, 21740 will increase your tax uh, by $634.59. The board does not have the ability to waive the 10% penalty. Uh, that is a state statute, and we uh, have no power to, to change that. Okay. So do, you, do you understand the math on that? We're, I just like I said, we um, our office moved, so we never received. And I talked to Shelby about it. You know, he did say it was sent, um, and I believe it, but we just didn't receive it. Yeah. No, the the board has no power to to eliminate it. So. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay. So you to make a motion to uh, make no change. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we're going to go back to uh, Mr. Masacato and Mr. Mora. Okay. Let me find your appeal. I'm muted. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mazzucato is on the air. Okay, yes. they're both on. They're both on the air now. Please give me a minute to find your appeal. And uh... so this is hearing number twenty twenty. Dash one twenty six. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I I do Reno Mazzucato. Yes, I do. Okay. So you've placed the market value on your property of four hundred and seventy two thousand three hundred dollars. Correct. Okay. And the town currently has a market value of $793,500. So please go ahead. Please tell us your appeal. We, based on the attached report that was provided by my appraiser, Robert Mora, who's on the phone, Robert's going to uh, go in depth and describe the report in its, in its entirety. Go ahead, Robert. What we did is simply apply the uh, in income approach to value based on the rental that's there, and uh, which was deemed a fair market rental straightforward and use a, a capitalization rate as you look at it it's a pretty straightforward um, the owner pays virtually every expense and the uh, the rental is, is pretty much a net rent and when you capitalize it out those are the numbers that it support um, since it is a, a commercial property an income producing property uh, the value based on its income potential is the number that uh, we have presented on, on our little uh, presentation. And um, obviously, we, we're, we're not privy to the uh, methodology that was used to determine the value by, by the town, so we can't really speak to that. But all I can say is, Looking at it as a pure investment property based on its income potential and its actual income, these are the numbers that it supports. Okay, can I hear from um, Mr. Kevin Coons, Chief Appraiser, uh, concerning this? Mr. Chairman, I'll, this is Shelby. I'll chime in. Okay. All right. 
So uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'm directing my uh, comments to um, the appraiser. Uh, yes, sir. Is it Robert Robert Morrow? Yes, sir. Yes, so Robert, you know, you, your client indicated that you submitted an appraisal, but I only have one page no. here. We all we what we what we applied, what we presented to him was a determination of value based purely on its uh, income income approach based on its investment approach, and a full appraisal was not was not done on the property. Okay, so that well, well, that answers that question. So, you know, as you as you know, as an appraiser uh, under Connecticut uh, law, uh, assessors are required to formulate a market value, not investment mm -hmm. value. You know, so investment value is is not uh, is is not the standard that that we follow, and in fact. Uh, you know, uh, I would tell you that you know, if, if if you submitted a full appraisal based on market value, we'd have something to work from. And 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 I would also ask you, sir, that there was a sale of a property just a couple of parcels away from the subject. It sold for 1.3 million. It was a restaurant, very similar to your subject property. And it was uh, they they tore the building down. Were you aware of that sale, sir? Uh, was, was, was that, that a was that a purchase? Was that a purchase by a national chain? That's that's Joe from Quality Subaru. Joe from Quality Subaru purchased two, oh, two, right. two was... parcels of land that ran contiguous with his own parcels. He actually overpaid oh, for the right. convenience that's of the right. use of the property. Yes. Right. So he paid a million three and he overpaid. And, you know, we're at far less than a million three on the subject property. So I'm asking the appraiser, did you consider that sale, sir? Did you look at it? Were you aware of it? And what did you think about it? All I can say is, yes, I was aware of it. And yes, as Ms. Mazzucato indicated, that it was a Purchased by a butter who had obviously he I can't speak for him as to why he would pay that amount for that, but considering that it it was significant to his expansion, one would assume that he will pay whatever he could to get it and uh, but again, since I have no hard data to support that or any other motive that he used, uh, I can't say why he did it and why he paid that. Okay, so you were you were aware of that sale. Thank yep. you. And, uh, and I guess the other question is, you, you indicated that you did not conduct a full appraisal. Is that correct? Correct. <clears throat> yes. so it's kind of hard for us to really evaluate what you've presented to us because you haven't really conducted an appraisal. I'm not sure what it is. What is it that you presented, sir? Would you describe it for us? What we did was an in, in, income capitalization approach as to its value to determine its its value based on its uh, investment value. Uh, investment value. That's what you said. Thank you. Thank you. So again, you know, we we operate on market value. You know, so I appreciate all the effort that you've done, sir, and uh, I really appreciate that and 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 that of of your client as well. Uh, I'm going to recommend no change, you know, to our board. And, uh, you know, we're going to cite, you know, that there are several sales up and down Route 5 where land alone, land alone sells for three and four and five hundred thousand dollars an acre. Uh, and people buy those properties and then they tear down buildings and they and they um, and they develop, you know, uh, you know, a new <laughs> facility, much like your client has. I think your client purchased the property from what was a formal, a former uh, uh, KFC 
facility. Mm -hmm. And I think they tore down the building and built a, a, a nice building w which they enjoy now. Uh, yeah. I, I stand to correct you. It was, it was not a teardown. It was a, re, it was a remodel of existing structure. Was it expanded, sir, or did you just take this, the it same? Was, it was not. It was not expanded at all. It was a remodel of the of the exact structure. Okay. All right. And what did you pay at that time? I don't have the numbers. The town would have those numbers off the off the top of my head. I don't have that. I don't have that. I do. It's six hundred thousand dollars in two thousand and thirteen is what you paid. And then what did you spend to remodel it, sir? Do you know? Do you recall that? I don't have that in front of me as well. No. Uh, you know, I can tell you this. I appreciate you. I appreciate the appeal. I really do because, you know, I know everyone is is trying to uh, reduce their tax liability. I don't want to. I, I want to reduce it to my, my fair share. I don't. Share. I don't want to. I don't want to not pay my 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 fair share. Our concern is the value of the property is only worth what we can collect in rent if I were to vacate the property. The rental rate in the market is, is not, it's, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of vacancy in the, in the immediate area. Bob, what was the vacancy rate in the area, did you recall? Well, the problem with, with, with your presentation, sir, is that neither, neither you or the appraiser has submitted any of that evidence for us to that'll consider. Be, that'll, be, that'll be before a judge will do that. Thank you, sir. Okay, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion of no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chair, people for hearing our, our words today. Appreciate it. Thank you again. Okay. Um. All right, we're going to move on to Glenn Saden, and you are hearing number 2020-101. So give me a moment to find those. Okay. Okay, so the hearing uh, we're now about to hear is 2020-101 Live Nation Worldwide Inc. And you are Glenn Saden, Ryan LLC, 81 South Turnpike. I'm going to swear you in. Hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay, this is 81 South Turnpike. Uh, I understand that you worked very diligently with the assessor's office and with Mr. Jackson. Um, so go ahead and... and uh, well, if, if, if I could lead off, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Sure, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we have two parcels of land. Uh, one is the, uh, the Oakdale Theater with the buildings in it, and the second part is just the parking lot. So um, let me allow me to so uh, so 95 South Turnpike Road, which is the actual building. Okay, so you're jumping you're jumping ahead to a, a different hearing. So I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, for the record, I I think we better uh 2020 101 is, is the parking lot. So I think 2020 101. Yeah, we better discuss that one uh at this moment. Okay, so 2020 101 is 81 South Turnpike Road. Correct. It's a parcel of land, vacant land, which is used as a parking lot 
an uh, accessory to the uh, theater. We have it appraised at recommending no change. And uh, my records indicate that Mr. St. Don agrees with that recommendation. That's correct. Okay, so you're in agreement. Um, you're in agreement that the assessed value will be. Again, Mr. Mr. Jackson, the assessed value you have on record is five thirty one five hundred, sir. It's that, okay, perfect. I want to make sure I'm looking at the right. So a market value of seven five nine two hundred. Assessed value of five thirty one five hundred, sir. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, of no change. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we're going to move on to. Live Nation Worldwide Incorporated, 95 South Turnpike Road. The town. Yes, sir. Has put a. Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, I know we had an earlier discussion, uh, so please tell us what uh, you and Mr. Satan has come, have come up with. Thank you, Your Honor. So uh, the town currently has a market value of $9,804,800. This is for the main parcel where the, the theater and the ancillary buildings are located uh, and we have agreed uh, to reduce the value the market value to nine um, nine million dollars nine million dollars market value are you in agreement mr sandin i am that's correct i hear a motion I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the market value to nine million dollars. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, is there anything we need to do next for just to await a decision? You will be notified notified by the assessor's office. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. Uh, we will send out a notification uh, and uh, to both the Ryan and to the property owner confirming the results of this hearing. Okay. Thank all you. Right. That sounds good. Thank you all for your time. You're welcome. Okay, um, so let's jump back to uh, uh, Lawrence Hogan. Okay, Kevin, are you there? Yes, I am, Shelby. Kevin, let's see if you can bring in Mr. Hogan. Let's see if, you know, we're trying to, Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to, Kevin and I are trying to both make sure that we can both handle these hearings together. So I'm going to ask Kevin to see if he can do this. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Hogan, um, have you found what yes. you're looking for? I did. 
Yes, the, the sale price on the house was 320, but I have the amendment to it. I don't know how you can see it. If I can hold it up to you. Um, how we get this on here? Bear with me, Mr. Hogan. I'm just going to try to fix this so that you can be a presenter, so that we can okay. see that better. But bear with me. Um, I, I want to be careful about that, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> you can share the desktop, but you don't have. Do you have it on your desktop, or it's just a piece of paper now? Oh, it's a piece of paper. I didn't put it into the. Okay. Um. Well, hold it up to the camera. I I I don't know any other way that we could see this. Okay. Let me see what we got here. Um. I don't know if this is going to work. Okay. Start at the top of it. <laughs> But it's an addendum to purchase agreement, right? I I can't read it. I, I can't read. It. I can't see numbers. Um, I can't see it. I can't see it either. So, I'm going to photograph it on my phone and then see if I can send it into you. But you don't have. You don't. Well, but let's 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 go back to the to it at hand. You know what what you paid for and what it's worth today are two different two different things, of course. Uh, and there has been an increase uh, in the the value of the property. You've done some work. You've added a pool. You've added a roof. You've added a bathroom up upgrade. Um, you, you know we okay. had it as a commercial we property. We put a um... We put a um, handicap uh, shower in. My son has learning disabilities, so that that shouldn't even be taxed. Well, it's a, it's an upgrade use. because it, because it was a, a building permit. You know, it's on there. Uh, it's just on there, right? Uh, it says right on it. It's handicap. Correct. Not taxable. Bathroom was bed. there. You can add a bathroom. Generally speaking, Mr. Chairman, if they did um, a simple plumbing fixture replace or a handicap bathroom like that, we would not typically change an assessment. Okay. Based on that alone. Yeah, I'm. I'm reading. I'm just reading by, uh, you know, building permit records. Okay, so we we can take that out. But we have a new roof, a new pool, uh, and, and when it was assessed, it was assessed under commercial, uh, and evidently, you know, um, that was wrong. Uh, it is, it is truly residential, um, which Kevin, you have have said, it increased the value, the market value, even more from commercial to residential. Um, so currently, we're at. You know, we're currently at a market value of, of 345 600 and uh we reduced the map the market value uh with an informal hearing with vision by 9800 and you know what market value do you place on the property that way The 305? It can't I be paid, 305. I, I mean, it's been 312 for 19. 2019. And the market, you know, the market has gone up dramatically by October 1st, 2020. Well, it hasn't gone up 40,000, I don't feel. You don't think the house hasn't gone up by $40,000 with, with uh, a new roof? Um, Well, people don't pay for a new roof. I mean, you need a roof on your house. I mean, people don't pay for a new roof. If you got oh, a roof maybe that's why, but, but that could be why, you, you know, uh, 
it, you know, um, the price was 305 back then, but but still, maybe maybe it was worth 305 back then. But but you've added, you've certainly added some uh, value to the house, and the market itself has added value to the house. Um, do you have any comps to say that it's not worth um, 30, 345? We already took uh, 9,000 something dollars off in the informal hearing. Uh, what does what that do, do for my off? taxes you if you take 9,000 off? You raised it up because I tell you it's not commercial, but you raised it up and now you take 9,000 off. But what did you raise it up? It's worth Raising more residential than it is commercial. Commercial does not add value to it today. Mr. You, Chairman, would, I, you would have trouble renting out that space. Well, I know was, commercial is very difficult to even rent out. I mean, right. it's so very difficult. Having it as residential has has added, you know, value to it. Um, that it's 100% residential. So. Yeah. You've you've provided nothing to say it's not worth that, you know, as comparable uh, comps around. You're telling me where you started, and really it's where it's where we're at now that that matters. What what the value is, Mr. Chairman? I have not officially increased the assessment. I, that's just for the board purposes. So his assessment or current market values right now is at three forty five six, right. and. My recommendation um, would be to leave it at that. I would not recommend increasing it. I, I no, I agree with that. I know. Yes, I I agree with that. You're just saying that the commercial to residential change put it up, but but he also went to an informal hearing that reduced it by ninety eight hundred dollars already. Right. Correct? correct. So it should have been. It was at three fifty four something, and was brought down to. Uh, 345.6. Now you feel it's it's should be brought down more. No, but you're not. You're not telling. You're not telling us what number. You know, you you think it's it's only at 305. Well, I I'm not in agreement with that. And well, I have eight thousand dollar give back from the time that I bought the house. So I feel that we're off the eight thousand dollars. Market again, value 2019. Is we're we're talking about October 1st, 2020. The market is gone up dramatically. So, what we can't give you, we can't give you what you paid for in 2019. You know, that's not market value in October 1st of 2020. <clears throat> plus, plus some improvements. You know, above ground pool and a new roof. I mean, there's value added there. So, we can't give you only what you paid for it between market driven you know increase and pool and roof uh we're at 345.6 so you haven't you haven't really you haven't pro provided anything to say that it's not worth that no matter what you could start it at a hundred thousand and and you know it's we still feel it's worth 345.6 so uh, can my wife talk? Come here. You want to know? She's asking me a bunch of questions, and I would just soon have my wife talk. And she's a real estate agent, correct? Yes, she is. So she should have a, a very good feel for the value of this house. So, in your best opinion, what is the value of your house if you were to sell it today? Well, the house is built in 1860, and uh, who is owner? Move in closer. I, I cannot you I cannot hear you. Okay. So the house is built in 1850 and the police owner living here for 30 years have no improvement. So everything is outdated. That's why on the market for over two years cannot sell. And we bought on and we do put the up ground pool, which is six thousand dollars. And we do put a new roof on because it was leaking. So I don't think we put the, the roof was twelve thousand about that. So I don't think we should put twelve thousand value on top of the house because any house come with a roof. When we bought them, we have a roof. 
Now we still have a roof, but just need to lower. So, I mean, you know, we- If you were to, a, as a real estate agent, if you were to put the house on the market today, what would you put it on the market for? 305? Oh, I would, I would, no, I would, no. 345? No, I would try to be thirty. to be honest. How much? 330. <clears throat> Because it's totally out there. The basement had the plumbing has a problem for water. Um, we got to dig out the basement. Everybody come in, you know, it's uh, going to have problem. Everything's 30 years old. Well, I, I, um, I mean, the house was um, three years ago, they put on the market, the highest, the price they asked was, I remember was 450,000. But how much is sell? Three child. You know, we can ask anything we want, but what you can sell is most important. We put them on four, four, four they put on 440,000, what they get by the end after two years, they sell three child. But just totally waste time. It's not, you know, re realistic. So the most realistic value, I think, is 330. Okay, I, I think the board members have, have, have probably heard both sides. We've heard the town, we've heard you. Uh, this is a real toss up between, you know, market value, where, where the real estate market is taking, you know, these houses. So uh, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the market value to 340000 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You'll be notified by the town. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, nobody else on. We have three more to go. 2020, 116, 2020, 67, and 2020, We haven't quite hit the eight o'clock time frame, right? I'm going to, uh, why don't we take a five minute break until eight o'clock and hopefully those three will appear. <clears throat> This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, there, there are three other cases. Yeah. What what are they? So I'll I'll, I'll start to call them. <clears throat> I didn't need the hearing number or the forty-three. Give me whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, forty-three Christian Street. Oh, give me the hearing number. Yeah, give me the hearing number. Uh, 2020 069. 069. Okay, yep. hang on. And by the way, Kevin, you're doing a good job. So just, you know. You too. That's not easy. <laughs> no, you're doing good. And, you know, the board needs to, you know, be comfortable with both of us because, um, you know, I'm not going to be around that much longer. So I'm. Okay. So, okay, I got 069. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's the other one? Uh, 067. 067. 067. Uh, 
Well, 67 and what else? And the last the one last is one. for Burger King. Um, all right, so I'm looking for 066 and 116. No, 0.69. and 0.69 and 0.16. It, okay, I got 116. Here it is. And uh, 0.69. I'm I'm not even gonna call them. I mean, they don't have a they don't have a uh, an authorization to speak. Talking about Burger King. I mean, they don't yeah. have the authorization yeah. to speak or anything else, so I'm not, I'm not going to bother calling them. No, I wouldn't either. either. Yeah, so I have 116 and 069. Is that correct? No, I have 067. 016 is for Burger King. I have, I have two more residential. One is 067, the other is 069. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll call both of those right now. We all back? No. You're here. Hi. 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 Uh, hello. Hello. I'm I zero six one nine. Hello, zero six one nine. Please give us your name for the record. Uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa Gimungala. Gimungala. Yes, thank you. thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Hang on. We've the, we have taken a break, but the chairman will start the meeting again in a few minutes. So please be patient. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I mean, when you're ready, Kevin will take over. Okay, I, uh, I'm ready. We're all here. Um, Mr. Avery, Mr. Barmico, uh, Shelley's here. Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting back to order. And we're going to uh, proceed with hearing number 2020-069, Lisa G. Mangala and uh, 43 Christian Street. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes. Yes, thank you. So 43 Christian Street. You've placed a market value of $346,080. Um, and uh, let's see, Let me just look and see what the town. Um, the town's current market va value is $418,700. <clears throat> So please go ahead and talk and, and tell us um, uh, about your appeal. Yeah, um, can I have my other half to talk to you regarding everything? And his name is Rob Ennis. Is sure. that all right? Who is she? My other half. Rob Ennis? Yes. Okay. Uh, we did call when they had the uh, uh, other company we did call the appraisal company and he said he basically um came up with the value of our house from two other houses one was uh, 23 morgan drive he used as a comp and uh 16 escato drive which is off of farm hill road and um on the old assessments we were actually um 
$43,000 less than um, Escado Drive. Now we're um, higher than them. They're only at two, uh, their assessment's at 290 over 293. So there's a $43,000 difference. So based on that house, I feel the assessment would be about 247,600. And then 23 Morgan Drive, um, we were uh, $31,000 less. And based on the new assessments, so that's where we came up with the 243. Because if you, they, they, um, when I asked them about um, location, he had no knowledge where Morgan Drive was, Christian Street was, or Escado Drive. So really, those houses have a higher value with the location. He's putting our house at a higher value than the other two. You did not include those two houses, any information about them, uh, uh, town cards or anything like that, right, in the packet? Oh, no, we didn't. Yeah, the one on Morgan Drive, they increased by 7,400. Escado Drive has uh, increased by 12,400. Our house increased the assessment by 58,000. Yeah, we have more. Um... Uh, more you don't. You don't have any information on those other two houses for comp, do you? You um, can't. As far as... No, no. I'm talking to. I'm talking to. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Kevin. You, you don't have access to any of the, that information on those houses. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're talking about a house here that uh, is uh, 2,572 square feet. Uh, they have more, more land, right? Okay, the town uh, has reviewed this. Um, subject is located in a neighborhood comprised of primarily older and smaller housing stock. The size and age of this home makes finding comparable sale in its area a challenge. This is a new house that was built in an old neighborhood, correct? Correct, correct, correct. So it was actually built on a, a, a building lot that was in our family for over 100 years. Okay, so um, going outside of Christian Street trying to find a comp is, uh, or or that inner, you know, uh, Christian Church Street, you know, to find something of its age and size is. Uh, so the town the town has reviewed this. They're currently had put a market value of four eighteen seven hundred on it, with a current assessed value of two ninety three two hundred. So they have changed uh, the style from colonial to conventional, bringing it more in line with its neighbors. Also changed the quality grade of the house and detached garage to C plus, okay? And, and this has resulted in a market value now of $376,100, okay? So the town has, you know, worked on this. Uh, to try to bring it more in line um, but there hasn't been a sale on our street of more than 300,000 
and we're so close to what's no, no one has a new house of your stature either in size. And, no, and, no, but then when you look at that we're 11 feet from the house on the side, that's pretty close too. That would affect the value, the well, location. That's well, that's what they're they're working on when they reduce this. So, I mean, we we reduced this house once before last within the last. Yeah, correct. Year. Correct. And that was because of the third floor, um, the 460 square feet, which um, isn't really heated or air conditioned. It's finished, and um, that's where you made the major assess uh, reduction before. Nobody would buy this house for four hundred thousand. So you basically you, you've come up with the 346080 by taking the last um, market value appraised value by the town and add and added three percent to it. Correct. Based on the two houses that they use as comparables, that's what they um, appreciated by. I'm not sure where Kevin is on this one. I think he stepped away from the microphone, but I'll step in if you need help, if you need input. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at what he input here. Uh, um, Shelby, I was just. You know, the discussion really comes down to how much, how much did the the house appraisal value factor in? And, and what what is the average appraisal of value in the town? Uh, some are three, some are five, some are more. Yeah, right. Well, some are more, some are less. I mean, depending upon the area. Right. I mean, this one here, I would, and and I think Kevin is back now, so I'll turn it to him. But I would ask, you know, I think this was a, a, a they purchased the cost of land, and then built a house. So I would look at their cost at least initially just to get a barometer as to what you know what might be reasonable and then you know we have some sales in that area that's a it's a desirable area and you know we've we're recommending a significant reduction right and um and i and you're talking yeah yeah and i and i think last time we reduced it quite a bit also um and Correct. you know, so we we reduced it quite a bit also. So in the normal course of time, three percent is, you know, in in a, a reval is one thing, but also uh, the the market at August at uh, no, August, October first, twenty twenty, um, is uh, certainly higher than three percent. I mean, uh, well, my neighbor's I mean, house didn't. My neighbor's house didn't appreciate three percent. His his old assessment was one nineteen nine, and now it's one twenty. 
This is a, a joint in property owner. So, so if I may just chime in, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Shelby. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think I think the issue we have here is that this is a brand new constructed house. This, this house is brand new. When all of the other houses around it may be much older. And, you know, we have to factor in, you know, a brand new house amongst many other older houses. And it's it's not a it's not a simple you know matter of just saying it's X amount of dollars per square foot or it's X this or that or the other thing, but um, but I would certainly you know encourage the board to uh, try to uh, try to understand uh, try to at least consider the fact that a brand new house in a in a in a good neighborhood among other older houses, you know, the market would probably tend towards the newer home uh, unless, you know, and, and you know, I don't, I don't want to make that, 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 you know, just that statement because there are, there are so many factors. This is a, this is a great neighborhood and, and there are so many, you know, issues to be considered, but one of them, I think one of the most important ones in this case, the house is brand new. It was, brand, it was built a couple of years ago. Even even compared to the, the sum of the comps, uh, it's much newer than them. Ascoli Drive, Morgan Drive. I mean, those houses are now. Uh, Ascoli Drive is 35, 40 years old. Um, I really think the town has, has done a good job at, at trying to, you know, uh, bring this more into in line, and and uh, you know they they have a market value of three seventy six one on it. I mean they've from down from four eighteen seven. So uh, I think they've tried their best. That's what they feel. Um, you know, with these changes, that the house is worth. And uh, do I hear a motion on that? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion of no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. So you'll be get updated from. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I, I'm not well, sure. No, you... The current market value is 418,700. So I just want to make sure we were voting on the correct thing. Correct. You're correct. The, the the motion should be to change from the 418.7 to the 376.100. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. Correct. Not, not no change. change. We're we're looking at the paperwork, but that is the change. So can I hear another another vote on it? Make a motion to reduce the market value to 370 376,100. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, you'll be uh, notified by the assessor's office of that change. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't we go to, um, let's see here, uh, George Dion. You there, Mr. Dion? Hello? Sorry. George, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So hearing number 2020-067, George Dion to Westview Drive. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes. Okay. And uh, to Westview Drive, you placed the market value at $195,000 on the house. And the town has. 
has a current market value of 216.6. So go ahead, please tell us uh, about your appeal. Okay, uh, two years ago, I purchased a house. I bought it for 115. There was a foreclosure. I started remodeling the house. In the following lot last year, you went up on the assessment saying that the house was halfway done when there's no CO on the house. The house still has no CO on the house. The bottom half is unfinished, cannot be lived in according to your building department. And I just think it was kind of ridiculous that you keep raising the taxes. This is going to be two years in a row that the tax assessment went out by my house that I can't live in. And where you see me right now is living in a trailer in my yard. Okay, but uh, have you uh, completed construction on certain areas, certain percentage of the house changing? It is. It's on the that has no CO. The house has no CO. That, but the house has value, doesn't it? Yeah, the house has value. I paid one fifteen for it. I figures. It, well, how much did you spend? How much have you spent on the house so far? I spent about fifty-five thousand dollars on a house. I'm doing all the work myself. Okay. So the house has increased in value. Yeah, to about 170. Okay. I paid 115 that, for it. That's, just, that's just raw that's just raw cost. What you paid and what you spent. Right. What could you what could you sell it for? Right now, you can't because no bank would give a mortgage on the house. Because well, it's let's, not let's say somebody wanted to, wanted to pay cash. What would you sell it for? Some what would what would a cash buyer buy for? That's all it's a nice, sold it's a nice looking house. house now. Pardon? It's a nice looking house now. Yeah, from the outside. You, you get you don't live on the outside of the house, you live on the inside of the house. The inside of the house is unfinished. You don't live on the outside. I don't live on my roof. I don't live on my front porch. I don't live in the front yard. The inside of the house is unfinished. Have we been inside the house at all? Uh, Kevin, do you know? Um, I don't have the field card in front of me. That would indicate whether or not there was an interior inspection done. You can call. You can get in touch with your building department on it. That I just had an inspection done on the plumbing downstairs, so I can cover it up in the concrete. What's the address? So what's the what's the, what's the uh, the the case number? I'll look it up. That's Okay, sorry, you want the address. The address is to Westview Drive. I'm, I'm looking at the field card right now. It says hearing 1230-2020. It says hearing BAA measure and in. 930-2020 um, permit measure only. 1219-2020 change and then it says 1230-2020 hearing BAA measure and in. Well, I'll try to help out with this one if I can. Sure. Um, on September 30th, um, well, let's go back to July 13, 2020. There was a field review. On September 30th, there was a permit measure only. They measure the exterior of the home. On December of uh, 2019, there was a change uh, because of an informal hearing. So we brought it way down because of the hearing. Uh, and, and the gentleman could explain to you his uh, discussion that he had at that hearing. And then, um, and then I, Kevin, I'm so I'm showing something at 12:30, 2020. There was a hearing BAA measure and inspection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably a little misleading. Um, Tim Williams went out there, and I think it, this is part of the informal hearing process, where he felt that it was for the informal hearing process. He felt it was necessary to go out and view the property. Um, according to this, it says he measured it and listed the interior. So that really should be coded as a sort of an informal hearing and not a board of assessment appeal hearing. Well, I mean, we're, 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 
did we ever get inside the home? Were we ever be were we ever able to do an actual? Inspection? Apparently, Jim Williams did an interior inspection December thirtieth of twenty twenty. And does the uh, did the property owner agree with that? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And and were you given an uh, assessed value at, at during that informal hearing? No, he mailed me in a letter that said it went from, I think it was $190,000 to one hundred fifty two or something like that on the, on the assessment. So on the we're assessor. at, I think, are we at the $216,600 as a market value right now for this property? Correct. Yeah. We're at one hundred and fifty one six current assessed value. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. So, and that is based upon October 1st of 2020, 60% level of completion. That current assessed value at that time was 151,600, current market value 216,600. Correct. Yes, and sir. Mr. And, and you were, Mr. Dean, you were sent that information, correct? Then All I sent out was the, uh, the three assessment value. I didn't get these, the, the uh, value which you place on the house. And all you, but, you, just, so you, you were sent the assessed case. value of 151.6? Yeah. Okay, so you were aware of that? Yes. Okay. And that, and that equates to a market value of 216.6. Are, are you in agreement with that? What was the assessment? That? That 151.6 assessment? 161. See, the assessment went up last, the year before, which I couldn't understand why. And I just wonder why it's going up again this year. Because, because what, of what's the, the assessment from last year. Well, let me see something. Mr. Let's see. Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. there was a permit that was pulled out for an addition in June of 2019. So that that would prompt us typically to go out and view the property to see if there's a change in assessed value warranted or not. Um, so I do see that, let's see. Yeah, here's, here's the assessed value history. The prior 2019 value was 136. Then it jumped to 192.4, which was brought back down to 151.6. That's where we are today, 151.6. Well, that's where we are actually on October 1st. So, you know, now we're six months later, okay? It could be higher, but again, this was this is based around October uh, 1st, 2020. So 151.6, 216.6 market value. That was that was calculated by vision from a field uh, review, correct? A, yeah, he came over and looked at it. But how could you assess the house higher when it has no CO on it? Well, well, listen, there Kevin, Kevin. There was no no CO on this house. I can't even live in this house. According to your town building department, I cannot live in this house. Okay, it's not Kevin. finished. It's an unfinished house. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The, 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 the man came out and looked at the house. The downstairs is completely, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no way you can live in the house. What so do you think the house is going to be worth at the, the, the end? On the outside of looking at the house, on the, the vinyl siding of the house on the outside. You drive by it, it's beautiful. There again, you don't live on the outside of the house. You live on the inside of the house, and, and it's not done. There, there's nothing on the inside of that house. It has one bathroom in it. That's it. Uh, so, Ke if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, this is Shelby. So, Kevin, um, apparently there was a change made from the informal hearing, and uh, you know, a significant reduction was made. So, have we ever been inside the house? Are we allowed to go in the house? I mean, tomorrow, if you want. Someone was inside uh, in December 30th of 2020. 
believe Jim okay. Lynch is the revaluation that saw it. So based on our inspection, what what is the what what is what is the level of completion? We valued this property. Um, we've discounted the value of this property because it's under renovation, so to speak. So it's um, so we've discounted the value because it's an incomplete um, house. But we we are required each October first, anytime there's a, an outstanding permit and where there's work being done, what we have to do is capture that value as of a October first or a snapshot in time. Have to properly assess that that property. Um, has so the property owner know, has the property done. owner been cooperative in in that process? Um, in 2019, I believe Ian, our data collector, was out there. And he left the door hanger to attempt to interior to view the interior to see how how much progress has been done. Or, you know, to verify what's finished, what's not finished. How far along the process is? We we'll have we do kind of go by a schedule that we look at, depending on how much, how far along the project is going, whether there's the, the foundation, the siding, the plumbing, the heating, the electrical, so on and so forth. So, well, I would just offer to the board that, you know, we're attempting to do our due diligence. Uh, for this property, and we we definitely do need uh, help from the uh, the property owner, and we are always willing to work with every property owner. So, uh, you know, we've done the best we can on this one, and my recommendation is no change. However, we are willing to go out and meet with the property owner and. And you know that that would that would require the board to table this while we while you send somebody back out there. I don't think so, Mr. Chairman. I think it. I think my recommendation is there be no change. However, we will work with the property owner in the in the, in the upcoming grandless year. We'll go out there. We'll make sure that everything is accurate. We will talk to that person. We will show them everything that we're doing, and uh, make a you know a record of of all the uh, the factors that we are using, whether it's half complete, 50, you know, uh, I think right now, hang on, let me, let me go back. We have this property as being, and Kevin will help me if I'm wrong. About 60%. 59% complete, Kevin, is that correct? That's what's on the field card, yeah. So that's, 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 that's what our figures are based upon. Correct. Yeah. And in Ian's explanation here, okay, during the informal process, we reduced the market value from 274.9 to 216.6 to accurately account for the 60% level of completion as of October 1st, 2020. And the homeowner was notified that the current assessed value was 151.6. So he's aware, you know, that based upon the visit and based upon the town's work okay that they felt there was 60 percent complete on october 1st of 2020. so yeah, we've identified the percentage complete um you know and and uh we reduced you know we reduced the uh um, market value to 216.6 now can i say something here Sure. When he came, when I went down and first talked to him, they said the house was finished. He assessed that at a finished house. That's when he came back out and he looked on the inside because he asked me, can I come inside and take a look at the house? I said, you're more than welcome to come and look at the house. Right. They assessed the first assessment at a finished house. It's not finished. And he realized that when he, when he came back. Okay. It was not a finished and house. I think, and, that, and I think that's what this adjustment is, all right, from 274.9 to 216.6. How does he figure 60% done? Are you, you people coming up with 60% done? I, don't know. I, I, I haven't been to the house. 
but but there certainly is you know condition and formula for for how they calculate that. Yeah, I like to see this, what's the formula for f figuring out. What is the formula for figuring this thing out? What you, you, you go, a, you're saying is sixty percent sixty percent of what of the overall value of the property. So like I said, we that have a the schedule that we're is not on the house. <clears throat> it's not finished. It's just not finished. I mean, the garage isn't finished. The driveway's not finished. Well, we, it's we, there's no fixing in it. The, the town is capable of determining a value of a house. Okay. That, the that's, not, that's not that's an issue. At it? I, I think that house at 274.9 uh, finished, That that's a fair representation of what the house is worth. Well, you're saying a finished house. The house just across the street from me that sold for 220. Not with the you amount of work that you put into it. Last two weeks ago for 220. And that's a finished I don't house. I know what house you're talking about, but I'm telling you, in the real estate market now, that house finished at 275 would not be out of line in the market. That is what the town does. Okay. That's what the assessor's office does. They know what a house is going to be worth. Okay. So Whether it's finished or not. Worth, I understand that part. The house is going to be worth when it's done, but it's not finished. You know, we're we're talking about, you know, we're just going around in circles. So, you know, I think I think on October first. Listen, I understand you're going to keep it the same. You're not going to do anything here. Just just leave it the same. I'm getting nowhere over here. Okay, let's have a motion then. What we've got to do is revisit the property. Mr. Chairman, make a motion of no change. Yeah, what else is no? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so caller 11. Uh, please identify yourself. Uh, yes, I'm actually both of them. I, I was trying to make sure that I got on there correctly. Um, so I called in first and then I got on the computer. So I just wanted to make sure. I got place okay, so, so you were on there twice. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. I, I remain, I remain to the record, please. Uh, sorry, I was just going to give my hearing number 2020-116. Okay, hold on. I have to find uh, your record, your uh, field. Twenty twenty one one six. So I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay, so you are here as what? You are. Ryan LLC. Yes, I'm the agent for the property, tax agent. And what is the property? That's a Burger King. Located where? Uh, located at. Sorry, I was just gonna pull up my evidence really quick. It's located at 888 North Colony Road. Okay. Do you have documentation that you? have been given authorization to represent Motzer S Realty LLC. Yeah, yes, I provided an uh, LOA whenever I did my evidence. LOA. Uh, letter of authorization. Okay, so let me uh, let me see if that is is in the package. Okay, I do not see that in the package. And also, uh, I'm going to inform you that we have been contacted by Susan Carter, called our office at 4.30 on March 11, 2021, okay? Yes. The owner 
does not recall authorizing the appeal by Ryan LLC. There is no letter of authorization included with the appeal. And uh, therefore, uh, we can't, we're not going to hear your appeal. So. Okay. Well, I, I spoke with her yesterday. I even have her phone number, but I, I understand. No. Nope. Unless you have, you know, unless you have something in writing um, verifying and that she contacts us verifying it, uh, we're not going to hear your appeal. So. Understood. Thank you very much. All right. Can I hear a motion? Make a motion of no change. Second. No appeal. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've completed all the hearings for this evening. Do I hear a motion? So, Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you tomorrow night. Sh uh, Toby, will you be with us tomorrow night? So, Kevin, stay on the meeting after after everyone logs off. Mr. That's Chairman, my, my, my goal is we're trying to bring Kevin in. We're trying to both work together here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Kevin to run the meeting tomorrow night.